Well guys, the new setup is in. So this is what I had to get me through the uh, hurricane. And what I've got here is three ampere time, 100 amp hour batteries in parallel. Uh, I'm using one gauge cable. So we got a maximum of 150 amps that we can bring through that wire without issue. So I've breakered it here at 150, and you can see coming down, and then I've got a fuse at 150 there as well, or 175. So, all to protect the wire. Um, this setup is running right now. And you know what we have here, we've got the three batteries in parallel. Uh, the ground is coming up to this Victron shunt, which reports everything that's going on to the Servo GX. They're being charged by this Victron uh, 120 uh, controller, which is pulling in from a 240 watt panel right now. And then uh, that's charging the three batteries, doing a great job. And then this is my inverter, the GN Dell, which is just a champ. So you can see right now, I've just finished cutting some of the grass. I'm charging the big battery um, off of this inverter. And this is what you have to do, guys. It's not about waiting for a disaster. You've got to find things you can run on this on a regular basis and reduce your overall FPNL or whatever your, your power company is supply and, and demand to um, get your costs down and also make yourself autonomous in the event of a power issue. So what happened? Uh, we've just come through 14 days since Ian devastated my area and this setup, okay, I'm trying not to get too much more of the other stuff in because I'm making some changes here. This setup, these three batteries with these bus bars that uh, shut and that, that controller and that gave me air conditioning for 11 days. They restored the power two days ago. So for 11 days, now the batteries were doing absolutely fantastic on just that 240 watt panel with the one controller, this guy here. Um, but by the end of it, the batteries were completely recharging to, to 13.5, which is 100%. Of uh, that, that's what the battery, the manufacturer says the battery is 100% full, but they never got to their old. They were struggling to get to the old 14.4, 14.5, where they want them to show full charge before they go into absorption. So um, day before yesterday, I unplugged them, put them on a charger, and let them charge full overnight on my new little Victron IP67, whatever that is. It brought them back up to the 14.6. Let them go ahead and float back down to 13 and they've been perfect for the, for the last two days. So this is the setup that you need, guys. It works great. Now, if you look at my other videos, you know I'm using this one as well. I'm about to send him back. And Amper Time is going to give me a 90% refund on this. And I'm going to get a fourth one of these, which I'll add in here. Then this setup will be clean. A few more changes on the way. Um, I was getting a bit concerned about these guys not getting the full charge. So what I'm doing... I'm going to add another controller. I like, I, I know these all-in-ones are becoming the range, but the problem with that is if, you're, if it fails as part of its solar, you've got to replace the whole thing. If its inverter is no longer working, you've got to replace the whole thing. If the charger that's built into it fails, you've got to replace the whole thing. I like individual components, and I like redundancy. So instead of swapping this guy out for a bigger controller to let me bring in more panels, I'm just going to get another one, and I'm going to add it right here. We're not going to put in the... Um, 12 to 12 Orion anymore because I'm going to move this whole setup into a little shed. My shed was destroyed in the hurricane, but I found most of the parts, <laughs> neighbor's parts, and I'm going to build a new shed over here. I'll show you in a second and move all this, this, and these into the shed. Uh, so there's a new controller coming with another 200 watts in panels, and I believe that's going to get these guys back to the 14 without a problem. And again, I'm in South Florida. You know, if you're in a less sunny climate, you may need even more solar than that. But the point, the batteries handled the load, right? They did it. And now look at the flexibility. To, for me to add more voltage, I simply have to go and buy another battery. It's another 300 bucks and what, $10 in cables? I mean, this is the way. This, this setup gives you the ultimate in flexibility. If I was to go on out to add another one of these, you know, you're talking about another $800 for one of them. And, and then... Uh, your limit, other limitations. So I'm just going to go ahead and add one more here, and I will be done. And then I'll have uh, I'm I'm going to have 
instead of having a 12 volt dedicated to the fridge, the four batteries will run the air conditioner and they will run through this little adapter here, they will run the fridge as well. And everything will come through one setup. And it'll have uh, roughly twice the solar that it has now. And just to show you what I'm planning, so this inverter ran that air conditioner for 11 days at 77 degrees, no noise. I'm gonna put up some videos of how that ran so you can see that I've got it plugged into the house now. <laughs> and it was perfect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build another shed here in between those two far windows out of the pieces that are left. And I'll have that be the little uh, solar shed for the old batteries. Oh, I'll show you that project as we do that. These two will go in there. And then they're gonna run a bunch of 12 volt functions throughout the house, little lighting and um, whatever else I can think of that I wanna run out there. So everything went great. So two, two projects coming up. I'm gonna add another controller and another 200 watts of panels. I'll show you what I'm gonna order. It's gonna be this controller and I'm gonna get the new power, new 100 watt panels. And um, that will recharge these batteries twice as fast, literally. I'm also going to hook this guy up. What we're gonna do, we brought, we got the Romex here going out for the outbound from the inverter, okay? We're gonna bring in another line here. We've got this hole, has a little bit of room in it. A 12 gauge yellow wire is gonna come in, plug this guy back into it. And then while we have house power and we have electricity, that will make sure my batteries don't get below, uh, you know, I wanna keep these at 70% so I get a really good long cycle life out of it. So a yellow cable is gonna be coming in here very shortly. That's gonna power this guy up. And then instead of plugging things into the inverter, I'll be plugging them into this outlet going forward. You'll see all that. And what we're gonna do is this outlet here, I'm going to replace that for a protected little plastic box outlet. And then I'm gonna leave the yellow cable plugged in there. I'm not gonna do anything permanent on the walls. I don't know if I'm gonna stay here. And I want this stuff for the boats anyway. So everything's gotta be portable. But I will go by that uh, protected outlet cover and I'll show you that once it goes on too. So this is your setup guys, it worked fantastic. Can't, can't say enough about it. GM Dell, great inverter. Of course, every Victron, Victron component performed perfectly. And these Ampere Time batteries rocked it. While my neighbors were running around trying to find fuel for their generators, and some even trying to find generators, I was in peace and quiet at night except for the noise of their generator sometimes got loud, but if I could sleep, no problem, these guys did the job. In uh, conjunction with that little AC, because, you know, that air conditioner, that's key. When you're looking for this, it has to be efficient. And these frigid airs, when they're running the compressor at full blast cool, 440 watts, then it comes on like every 25 minutes. If it, no, if it senses that the room is still fairly cool, it just runs a fan. That's only 80 watts. Fan with some kind of coolant. But it only runs the compressor, I don't know, once every three or four hours to maintain temperature. Very, very efficient unit. And while it's not running at all, while it's just sitting here, it's only drawing like one or two watts. I mean, really good. You can do this. And uh, I'll keep you updated on the next phase. Oh yeah, one other thing I did, now that the I'm fully cycling at 14, I had the panels down here on the ground so that I could angle them based on when the sun was coming up to get the maximum amount of watts in there. And you can see that in your Victron uh, tools, lets you see how many watts each panel is producing as you change the angle on it. Very, very good tools through the Bluetooth. But now that it's gone, I just, I keep them up here. A couple of screws on the screen, not going into the roof, just into that mount, that framing. And um, they're out of my way. And uh, so that's all back up too.